Parts of the world are getting wealthier, but we're all getting older. Two reasons why self-care is on the rise. As a result, the global consumer healthcare market continues to grow at a healthy rate. However a manufacturer gets its product to the consumer, retail rules. Welcome to the Shopper Science Lab. We are a retailer collaboration centre, so we will uh, bring our retailer partners over here uh, and discuss joint opportunities with them over the next one, three, five years. Uh, and we are a shopper research facility, so we will bring shoppers in uh, and we will try and understand how they shop within the different environments. The lab has two retail setups, a sort of fake pharmacy and a mock-up of a supermarket healthcare aisle. Even the store atmosphere is enhanced with tills beeping and background noise. We're trying to create a, an environment that feels familiar to the shoppers that we bring into this space. Um, but it's a controlled environment, so we can limit the number of variables that we're looking at, whether it's a, a change in the signage or navigation or change in the pack designs that we're, that we're looking at on the fixtures. Selected volunteers are asked to shop a number of categories. As they make their way around the store, CCTV, microphones and eye tracking are all used to test different variables. Shelving arrangements, packaging, promotion stands, product claims made on packs, even how shoppers react to GSK products next to their competition are all tested. The results help inform internal business teams and retail partners. Big Brother is watching, even online. It's very interesting to observe shoppers as they walk around a retail environment or watch shoppers as they undertake an e-commerce shop as well. You can elicit a lot of insights that way as well. So bringing all those technologies together I think is a unique point of difference for the Shopper Science Lab. The feedback from the shoppers is invaluable to marketing teams. We know that shoppers do not spend a great deal of time looking at individual products in the supermarket or a pharmacy. But it's really important to make sure that we're prioritising the communication elements that we're putting on our packs so that uh, shoppers can quickly understand what product is actually going to be best for them and best for their needs. In the early stages of bringing a product to market, uh, we'll be looking at the different pack designs. As that market is being uh, brought to retailers, we want to work with the retailers to optimise how that then appears on the shelf and on the fixtures. A lot of the research um, is focused on the journey that the shopper goes through. You know, where do shoppers first go to when they enter an environment like this? Where's their next destination within this environment? So by being able to map that out, we can then ensure that our communications and our product offerings are best suited to their particular journey point. And technology is helping sales and marketers on the road too. Instead of showing small retailers lots of products, you can do it with just one little bit of paper and an AR app. From small screen augmented reality to immersive big screen virtual reality. Welcome to GSK's vision for the pharmacy of the future. It looks very impressive. What is it? So this is one of the, the largest seamless touchscreens in the world. Uh, and it's an interactive touchscreen. This is a great opportunity to share some insights around where we think the future of the retail environment is going to go within the pharmacy channel. Uh, and we can bring shoppers into this space and get them to interact with it as well. So we get their feedback and thoughts. So do I get to play with this? Absolutely. Okay, so what we have here is uh, 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 an example of a fixture that you would typically see within a, a grocery environment. So you can start moving products or moving uh, some of the shelves around. Okay. Let's move that over there. Let's move that over there. And we use this for, for really trying to optimise uh, where the products are located on the fixture and what is the right range and assortment that we need to have from a shopper point of view. But you've got more than just your brands here. So yeah, absolutely. Why, so. why is that? Why not just have Sensodyne everywhere. Well, because actually we know that shoppers want to have a full range of products and that includes both our products as well as uh, competitor products. So it's right that we work with our retailer partners to understand how we can lay out the total fixture. What are you learning from how things are positioned? So we can understand where people are looking on the fixture and we can also integrate lots of data behind the products as well. So that gives us a better opinion in terms of what we should be doing from a range and assortment point of view. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in these labs and how important they are to the yeah. future of your company. Yeah, so first of all, we have a consumer sensory lab and a shopper science lab. We have one here in, uh, in London across the street. We have just opened a shopper science lab in Singapore. We have consumer sensory and shopper science lab in New Jersey. So it's an important capability we invest in. But what's also really important is it's an unbelievable opportunity for us to partner with our retailers mm -hmm. and really together 
kind of make sure we're doing the right thing for the consumer and shopper so we can make their shopping experience simpler and clearer so they can pick the right product at the right time. Hello, I'm James Wright. Thanks for watching Marketing Media Money. To check out more online videos, just click on the boxes and don't forget to subscribe to the CNBC Life channel at the bottom of the screen.